Do you like gold? Do you want to maybe know some ideas of where to find some gold at? That's a great question. That's what we're going to talk about today. Well, welcome to Gold Fever Adventures. I'm Jack Tucker. Uh, probably one of the number one questions I get asked so often is how do I find gold? How do you locate those gold deposits? Well, I think if anybody truly knew the answer to that, they'd be a billionaire by now and wouldn't be talking about it anymore. But uh, there are some clues and some uh, ways to kind of help better your odds of you know locating those gold deposits and what you're looking for and we're going to be talking about a little bit of that and i'll show you some of the different areas where to dig at and and we are out here in the desert we're in the arizona desert so you got to keep in mind desert is a little bit different than your mountainous area and your rivers and your streams we don't have any water out here in the desert, and so this is dry wash country. So it's a little bit different. We get flash floods and stuff like that, but uh, no water. So uh, we're going to talk about dry washing. Well, not dry washing in essence, of dry washing. We'll talk about the dry desert and maybe how to locate some of those gold deposits. But anyways, I want to thank you guys coming along and sharing on these adventures. Now, one thing to keep in mind, you look up here and you see mountains. All around you is mountains. Down below where I'm standing, it's all flat grounds. Now picture thousands and thousands of years ago when when the earth was violent, you know, when, when mountains were being pushed up. So these, these mountains got pushed up through the earth and they brought this gold that was down inside of it up with it. Now the gold is up on the mountains. So what happens is over time, it gets eroded out of the mountains and starts to work its way down. So as it rains and the flash floods happen, the water's gotta go someplace. So the water is gonna take a path of least resistance. And what's gonna happen is it'll start to form and start to move. And over time, it just keeps going to that same spot. And over time, these little washes or little runoffs or little rivulets seem to get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So what's happening is bringing down that gold from the mountains. As they say, there's gold in them dar hills. Well, it's bringing it down and it gets lodged in these washes. Now, once it gets lodged in the washes, it wants to find a place to drop out. It's heavy, it's heavy, it wants to stop. So if you look at your mountains, all the washes seem to be running in the same direction, down. So if all the washes are coming down, you maybe wanna find that wash that starts to take a turn because that is gonna stop some of that gold from just flying down here. There's not a lot of bedrock when you get lowered down here. So the gold is just gonna keep on moving. Let's just take this wash right here. We had a little dig up here last week. People are up here digging, but it's coming down here and now it's starting to take a turn. And you can see where people have been digging at in this hillside right here and this is a good indication so all along here you can see a lot of different rock formations this white stuff this is probably like a deteriorated caliche that's a sediment that's a false bedrock you get a little lower down you get this right here same thing 
same thing. It's just like a deteriorated cliche. So if that would be the bottom, let's just say, and as it starts to work its way up, you will get the rock, like this right here, this gravel, peel of gravels and gravel layers. That is sitting on top of this cliche stuff because this ain't going to pass through the cliche. So it's just going to sit up on top of it. This is all good material to run. All of this is good stuff for dry washers. You can also keep in mind as this wash was coming down and over time, as again, as the water starts to recede, it starts to again take path of least resistance. So if you look, follow this coming down, it could have kept on going straight. But once the water recedes, it starts to make a little turn. And that's what causes these little S turns and these little uh, bends in that. So if you stood way high above it and looked down and you see all these S's, well, once upon a time, that probably went straight. And that's why you hear people say, like, dig on the inside bends and stuff like that. Because that's where the gold will flow out. The least resistance of that water, there's not a violent push in it elsewhere. It's kind of dropping itself out of right there. You see, as this wash is coming down, the inside bend is right here. But as you look, there's nothing there. Everything is on this side. It's up on the high benches. This is what they call the high benches. And this is where all that gravel's at. And it's not like over there, and it's not clear down over here. It's just right here in the middle. So this is as, as this would have flown down through here and start to settle things out. That's why you get this layer right here. And then it disappears again as it gets more violent and starts pushing things away. And also as it's coming flying down through here, it's not going in this same direction. It's now going in this direction. So there's a slow spot, kind of like a riffle in a, uh, in a sluice box, so to speak. It's going in the opposite direction. So anything's flowing down here is stopping right against here. So this is just a good area to, to test or to get in. And you'll see a lot of times the old timers, what they do, they'll, they'll tear down part of a hill or they'll, they'll, you know, trim down or rake down or whatever. They'll go down a couple of feet because they want to see what's under the ground. And they're kind of looking for these layers or these, these uh, river rock layers or gravel layers or cleachy layers. Then they want to know what's under the ground. Now, the closer you get up towards the mountains, you'll get into more of your bedrock looking stuff. So let's go closer up to the mountains and see what that looks like. Now, you know, as you start to get closer to the hills, you'll start to notice mines. You'll see the tailing piles. There's a big mine in operation right there. You see the header frame right there. Or not the header frame, but that was a loading chute, what that was. There's a road there, they come, there's a mine up there, and they come out on tracks and dump that ore down on that chute. And then something would pick it up and take it away. But that mountain up there is all torn apart, the backside of that mountain. So there's mines all over the mountains. You don't see a lot of mines out on the flat grounds. Most of the mines are on the hills. And you're also, you can look for changes. You know, like these old timers, people would say, why did they walk all the way up there and start digging? It's because they're looking for shear zones and faults and stuff like that. But if you look where changes are, the different colors of the dirt. So if you see red dirt here and right next to it is brown dirt or white dirt, wherever there's a change at, those are good areas to investigate or to, to play around in and see what's there but let's get closer up here to this mountain up there. You see this cut right here? That's what the old timers cut out right here. Uh, now you see this is a hard shell like rock. And over here, it's just regular rock. There was probably a quartz seam that ran right down the middle of this here. Ran right down in here. And they took all this, this quartz seam right out of here. The button right up against this here. Looks like that's going to drop off down there. So I better be careful walking down there. Looks like that went down there. See, they took this right against this seam. 
you can tell there's the heart again, but that's what they took out. See mines, there's tailings of mines all over this hill up there. Okay, I'm up here now, up on one of the mountain sides here. Let's walk over to this wash. There's a lot of people digging down in this wash. A lot of evidence of people digging. You know, there's an old saying, gold has been found where gold has been found before. Well, that's true. Uh, that's one way to help you find gold. But there's also lots of gold deposits that's never been found yet. And you could be one of the first ones to find that gold. Now also keep in mind, you probably got two types of deposits. You got uh, one which I'd call like a riverbed. If you're, uh, you know, you're in an area and you see a bunch of big boulders and a bunch of big rocks and that's probably a riverbed. And then you get into an area like this, which is probably more of a lake bed. It's just all opened up. There's not a, lots of those big round boulders and big round rocks. It's all more angular and and more of the caliche. It's probably more was a big, like a reservoir or a big lake bed. And the water came in and maybe brought that gold in or the mountain shot up in the middle of it and then drained it all out and left the gold behind. Walking down here, see somebody's digging down here. Put a bucket there, it says active dig. That means somebody is digging in there. See that they're cleaning out the bedrock. It's all bedrock right there. Now, if you look, let me see if I can get down in here without hurting myself. Maybe I can't. Ah, oh, let's get down in here. Oh, oh. Okay, see all these nooks and crannies? This is hard. This is hard. That's hard, hard bedrock. Hard, hard bedrock. You notice that hard bedrock and it comes down? And they get down into here. And this is more of a softer bedrock. See this, this just cuts apart. How that just breaks apart. And there's dirt left in there. So this is starting to deteriorate and it's coming apart. Oh, and they're taking all of this out. They got down past this hard, hard bedrock, down to more of a shell type layer. And they're moving it. They're gonna move some rocks to get down in there, but they're working this area. And also see kind of how this bedrock goes. It goes up this way. That was how it was laid in. So you can follow this down. Follow it down, down, down. It'll get deeper, 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 deeper until you get to that V. And then it'll probably start back up someplace else. Which would tell you the gut of this bedrock is probably over here someplace. The water flies down through here. It piles up all these rocks on top of all this bedrock. A lot of overburden to move. You see all the gravel layers in here? It's all been untouched, all untouched, just waiting to pick up. Again, you can see this here, shell light coming down through here. It's gonna go deeper and deeper until it hits that V and it's gonna come working back up again. Let's just kind of walk up through here. Somebody took a little sample out right there. There's a lot of, a lot of old timers in here. Look at all the rocks have been stacked up here. Tons and tons of rocks have been stacked up through here. Tons of rocks, I say. Tons of rock. Again, somebody's been in here. Who's this here? They're pulling this all out. Threw out all these rocks. They're probably just using a classifier, half inch or quarter inch classifier, and taking the dirt out. And it looks like they probably vacuumed it. But here's what they didn't do on top of this white stuff. See all of this in here? They didn't bust none of this up. All of this, they didn't bust up. They left a lot behind here. So all this stuff could just be busted apart. They left it all. They vacuumed. But there's still a lot of gold that's stuck in between these cracks. And there's still all out of gravel layers all through here to take. A lot of areas still to dig here. And all through here, too, same thing. Somebody left their water bottle. That kind of ticks me off. I see trash up here. But this is all they've dug down. They left a lot of stuff. Looks like they may have vacuumed right through here. Look at all those gravels that they've left in here. And again, I can see right here. Look at this right there. They didn't take that. They 
they didn't take this. They vacuumed, but they didn't break apart this easy, deteriorated rock stuff. Look how easy that just comes down. They left all of this here. They left it all for somebody else to come up and get. And continue walking. See again, here's some more stuff right here. They dug all this out, they vacuumed, but you can just see this stuff right here. Look at this. They've left all of this. They do sell this bedrock here. Tap on it. And what you're listening for. Okay, see how that got soft? See how that changed? That's hard there. That's soft there. That's soft there. Listen to those soft zones. That soft stuff is what will just split apart easy. There's a quartz band right there running all the way up. And here's your contacts right there. See that quartz that's in between? the rock right there. That's how it gets shot up in there. These things would hurt if you... If they pulled out so big, don't you? Fell down, it almost got me. And people breaking galore, breaking down galore, looking for the gold. Looking for the gold. Looking for the gold. Quartz all over the place up here. This is what we call the mountain of gold. Here's the evidence. This is the hole I've been digging in. I keep getting signals. Probably bedrock. But it's just like deteriorated. It's a harder pack. But see that brown, nice stuff in there? I keep getting signals. It might be there's a lot of, of ionization in there. Compact and it's just setting the detectors off. And there's a big quartz vein that runs right through here. All the way to the bottom, and it runs all the way up there, top of that mountain, back down. But we found a lot of gold right here. And if you walk further up this wash, you'll see where people's punched down at, dug holes. They didn't find any gold. So I'm going to assume this, it kind of goes at an angle, this hill right here. So from that main quartz vein was probably a shoot off vein that came over and then it broke off there and it slid down the hill. You gotta think back in those days, there was no rocks on this hill. When they first came up, this was probably all nice and smooth. So as it broke off, that was easier to work its way down. And then more and more dirt comes down and buries itself. More and more rocks come down and start to flood these hills. And we came along with detectors and what the old timers didn't have detectors back in those days. And man, you can just see where people's been all over here. A lot of these holes, they're filling back in their holes, which they should. But they have pulled gold all over. Pieces of specimens and large pieces of gold all over in this area. But it kind of slid down. Kind of went down and it got into this wash. And then once it hit this wash, it pretty well was all busted out of its quartz. And there was nothing but just the pieces of gold. And it travels down. So there's somebody down there working it. He's getting some nice gold. But it goes further and further down. And it's further and further. And it gets going, going, going. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And beat up and beat up and beat up more and more. And smaller and smaller. A little breezy up here today. A little breezy. When you look over there, you see tailings there. There's a cut there. There's a big cut right there. There's a cut right there. There's a cut right there. Get on this side of the hill and there's nothing there the old timers left this gold there's a lot of gold here and the old timers missed it all that's because they didn't have detectors now they could have found the ledge and took that easy stuff out of there and the stuff that they missed was buried down and there had no way of finding it once it got buried but there's a lot of gold up through here and of course the evidence gold is where gold has been found well, gold has been found all through this area. Now that is a rat's nest. These rats will build these nests and they'll take all of these, 
these uh, pieces of this cactus and of these choya cactuses and they haul them, they fill the nest with that stuff. And that's so the critters won't come in there after them because they don't want to get poked with all of that type of stuff. But those are rat's nests. And generally where there's rat's nests, there's snakes that like to hang out around them. There's a quartz vein you see right here. Travels all the way down through here. More of a low grade quartz ore. No good quartz, not good quartz. Not the quartz like we're used to. But people are tearing into it. They're looking for gold inside that quartz. Spider veins running all over them through here. You see the evidence of all that cleachy, those are big, what we call cleachy bricks, just broken apart. Well, that's the area of the mountain of gold. Let's go to a different spot lower on down and check that out down there. Eventually, all of that water travels down the little rivulets into the washes, to the bigger washes, and eventually it makes its way down to the big wash. And I think that once gold hits that big wash, it becomes widely dispersed and it goes deeper down. So I tend to stay out of those big washes. See, in this wash right here, you come down, you see, now this is hard rock right here. This is a caliche, kind of a conglomerate rock. This can contain gold. This has a little bit of everything in it. Your quartz, and that has everything in here. You could kind of come down off of this a little bit just to see if there's any gold in there. But it's a caliche. Cement, that's hard packed stuff right there. I don't want that. I don't dig there. Here's a smaller wash. Doesn't really look like nobody's dug in here. See quartz in here. Rocks have piled up. But I don't see no evidence of anybody digging in here. I don't see any evidence of anybody digging. You know when you see pieces of quartz like this here, pull that out of the ground and you look at the bottom of it. The more orange this is, the more iron is stained, which means the ground is highly ironized or highly mineralized. And you can tell that just by rolling pieces of quartz over. See, that's really dark right there. That's kind of lighter. Look for the ironized iron. You love iron. Gold loves iron. All right, let's walk down into this wash here. I'll show you some diggings. Okay, you walk up and down these washes. See that? Those are stacked rocks. Somebody's been in here digging. See all of this? This is all workings. This is all workings. I played in here before, found some gold. See how this is gravel? It's gravels, it's got gravels in there. Kind of roundish, but it's gravels. That's what you want, you want this gravel layer. Good, good gravel layer right here. I have dry washed this way before and I have found some decent gold. But you can see this, a lot of people have been tearing this hill apart right through here. All the way down through here. See, they're doing holes. Tear down to the roots. Down to the roots. It's getting a little windy here. This here is all 
probably tailings, mound of dirt all through here. All through here. People taking buckets out, filling these holes. You know, take care of these holes problems. This here's all tailings. There's all workings and tailings. Tailings, see somebody's just taking gravels out right down through here. Now this is a pile of rocks from the old timers. Where gold is where you find it. Lots of nice pieces of quartz all through here. This was probably once a time a big piece of quartz that just broke apart. But see it's iron stain, it's orange. A lot of quartz in here. Oh, somebody looked like it was right there. They dug out this little wash. They didn't terrorize it, so maybe they didn't find anything there. There's gold all over, but it doesn't mean every single wash has gold in it. That's why you got to investigate. You got to investigate. Do a little sample and see if you get any gold in it. You know those old timers, they would get in these washes and do a little dry pant. And if they found gold, they just keep going higher and higher and higher up and higher up and higher up, looking for the source of where that gold was coming from. And if it ran out, then they'd have to start going up the mountain one way or another way, looking for the gold. But they would find it. And when they found it, they tore the whole thing apart. <laughs> There's a piece of iron right there. That's heavy. Now, if this sticks to a magnet, it is magnetite. If it doesn't stick to a magnet, then it's hematite. I'm going to guess that it is semi-magnetic. I don't have a magnet to test it, but I'll hold on to that rock. When you walk up and down, you see where people dug at. Lots and lots of things. You see, they tore this whole bank apart right there. You see where the old timers threw their rocks out. Dry washing, there's two piles of large and small. The dry washing right here. Looks like they stacked rock, probably to stabilize their dry washer legs. But right there's where they set the dry washer at. You know, that uh, washes are coming off of here, flying down the hills, and it's starting to cut these washes. And then over time, you might start to see another little one forming off and coming this way, and it'll cut another one. So. If the, if the wash is coming down and you look for the wash is going this way, now that kind of acts like a riffle in a sluice box and digging those washes because those can have a nice little gold in them too. Nice little area right here to get into. Look at all those rocks in here. Nice rocky layer. Somebody was finding some decent stuff in through here. They took a lot of this out of here. See the wash coming down right there, it's starting. This here's the main wash right here, coming down. And they come down and they join right together right there. Where they join, that'll create like an eddy right there in the middle. You start at the end of that and start digging into that where these two washes come together and you can find the gold if it's there. Sometimes when you're up in the mountains and you'll see the saddles, saddles are always good places you know, everything in the saddle all come together in that same wash coming down. So check saddles, the bottom of the saddles inside those washes. Check them for gold. Well, it's getting a little windy here. Guess I ought to head on back to the home front. But uh, anyways, sure appreciate you guys coming along. Hope maybe I showed you guys something. You know, I ain't, I ain't no geologist. I don't claim to be a geologist and I ain't no scientist. So uh, don't go leaving me hateful comments and all of that. You know, I know I got my hater out there that uh, no matter what you do, always got to give you a thumbs down and dislike or once in a while leave you a bad comment, you know. But we, we know who our haters are. But anyways, 
Uh, I want to thank you guys for coming along and sharing on these adventures. If you're one of my subscribers, thanks, man. Thanks for supporting the channel. Appreciate each and every one of you. All my Patreons and channel supporters, thank you guys as well. So anyways, until our paths cross again, I hope you get out there, get you some of that little bit of that yellow gold, and then maybe we'll meet in the gold field sometime. But anyways, you guys all take care, and thanks for watching.